everybody. Jason Sherman here. In today's episode of Zero to CEO, I speak with founder and CEO of Matic, Nick Meech. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Jason. Yeah, no problem. And uh, we're going to talk about how to build trust with customers, which is a super important topic. Uh, you know, the pandemic kind of threw a loop into the business world, right? And a lot of people either went out of business or uh, customers weren't too keen on buying from new businesses. They were kind of going towards traditional, the things that they knew. What yep. kind of um, things did you see happen during the pandemic that kind of shifted consumer perception of companies? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, I guess decoupling one, when the pandemic first hit, right? I think everybody going remotely, I think that caused uh, change for behavior, right? So now, you know, I think the buying committee for a lot of things now increased, right? So there's a lot more decision makers, there's a lot more uh, people that you have to get in front of to get to a decision, right? And then fast forward to today, I think coupling with the economic climate and the things that are going on uh, in the economy, I think uh, now it's even intensified. I think a lot of people are looking at their tools and their software spend and saying, hey, what is above the line? What is below the line? And what are the things that we absolutely need? And I think there's a bigger scrutiny now for vendors to provide ROI, right? And value to their, to their uh, customers. And you mentioned uh, that there was uh, software, hardware, whatnot, that was kind of changed. What, what were the biggest uh, takeaways from the pandemic that you saw from companies trying to either onboard customers and or keep them? You also mentioned like decision making. What kind of decisions had to be made uh, more with more people? Yeah, so I think um, on, on the, well, I guess taking a step back, I think just working in a remote situation, right, where, uh, you know, you're not face to face, you're not in person. I think that was something that we saw a lot of customers adjusting to us included, right, as a company, we had to adjust to a remote first culture. Um, what were some of the things you had to do, like, specifically? Yeah, I think, you know, when you are in person, I can only I can speak like a startup, right? Yeah. We, you know, when the pandemic first hit, one of the things that was challenging for as a first time founder and as an entrepreneur, you know, we're building our culture, we're building our DNA right now, right? We're not Facebook, Google, right? Where they've got massive teams dedicated towards solving this problem, um, and it's very difficult when you jump on a Zoom and there's like five boxes and you're <laughs> trying to do happy hour, you're trying to do team event, uh, and only one person can really talk at a time, right? right? Uh, so one of the things that we try to do, especially early on, was we, we call them burrito Fridays. So a lot of the team was in the Bay Area. And, you know, when the lockdown, when, you know, California shut down and, and we, you know, we were like, hey, how can we be safe while at the same time build our culture and build our ethos and our DNA? So we did burrito Fridays where we would, you know, buy burritos from a taqueria in the city and we'd go to a park, eat outside and have that. Nice. Company. So, That's fun. I think those are the type of things that you have to double down on uh, just because it is different when, when you're on a Zoom versus when you're in person. I like that. But Taco Tuesday is so normal. So Burrito Fridays, I like that. <laughs> there you go. And you guys are like data-driven decision makers, right? You guys use data a lot for, for your customer relationships. Tell me a little bit about how that drives your decision making. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, we, we are obviously, uh, our product and what we do is we automate data-driven content, right? And so we, similar to how our customers use our product, we use it internally where we'll share one pagers with our customers or QBR decks, renewal decks that shows the value of how they've been using Matic. Um, so not just adoption, but then also tangible ROI that we are able to show them to say, hey, you've saved X amount of time with Matic or we've increased your account coverage by X amount. Um, is, that, is that mostly how you present your findings to customers is by just giving them statistics like that? Or do you give them use cases or do you tell, you know, maybe a, a more extravagant story? Yeah. Line? Like I think at the end of the day, yeah, when a customer buys your product, they have an objective, right? So they have an objective in mind or they're trying to solve for something and that's why they're purchasing your product. And so what we try to really do is really map out those objectives up front and then tie the data to those objectives. So an example of this could be if you are trying to do more with less and you're trying to make your team more productive and you don't want them spending 
time putting together these, you know, QBR, these renewal decks manually, well, we can show you, hey, it took you two hours per presentation. With Matic, it's only taken five minutes. Wow. The Delta is like what we've been able to automate. And as a result, here's how we're helping you accomplish your objective that you had initially with purchasing our product. So it always starts with why the customer bought. And then you're trying to tie those data points and that story and that narrative back to those objectives. That's a huge difference. Two hours to five minutes. What kind, like, what, what kind of things, uh, how, how are you saving that much time? What, is there yeah. a, se- a secret sauce you can tell us about? Yeah, so I think, you know, taking a, let's look at the status quo. What we yeah. normally see in the market is uh, a customer success manager, potentially like at a, at a company. Um, there are templates that are given to them. So okay. a business review that they're supposed to do with their customers. So there's a template in PowerPoint or Google Slides. Mm-hmm. You make a copy of the template. And then mm-hmm. there's usually notes that will say, okay, yep. Jason, go to Salesforce to get this data point. Go to Nick. He can pull you this data. Go to Tableau to get this chart, right? And it's very, very tedious and very, yeah. very time intensive. And so our, what we do is, is we connect to those data sources on your behalf. Oh, and nice. Go and automatically pull the data for you insert it into the presentation, do all the formatting so you have something that you can then go and share. Now, and we're not trying to replace PowerPoint or Google. At the end of the day, you still have the ability to tweak. That's why I say five minutes, because right. once it generates, hopefully we get you to the one yard line. And then you always have the ability to make changes, tweaks based on context that you have that we don't have in the data, right? Absolutely. That sounds amazing. Uh, I'll have to check it out one of these days. Um, Tell me what the Matic hierarchy of data means and what it is. Yeah, so I think there's different categories of data. And in my experiences, uh, my background has been in product and analytics majority of my career. Um, And when it comes to data in general, specifically from the customer perspective, I think at the bottom of the pyramid, it's very similar to, I'm sure you've heard of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Of course, yeah. We've kind of translated that to data where at the bottom of the pyramid you have basic data, like account data, like what they purchased, what industry they're in, right? Anything that you have in your CRM, most likely. Uh, Then from there, a step up is you have usage data. So how is your, how are they using your product or service? How often, you know, are there certain, using certain features, all the above. And then from there, you're then hopefully trying to translate that to, which is at the top, which is ROI. Mm -hmm. How does that our, how does that usage data then translate back to ROI that showcases how you've helped them going back to what I said earlier accomplish their objectives or accomplish their goals of why they purchased your product or service? So that's kind of the way that we look at the hierarchy of data. Is you've got the account level data that's kind of you know stuff that you collect in the pre-sales motion, like the objectives, industry they're in, why they bought their use case. Then you have usage data. Again, how they're using your product or service. And then last but not least, the pinnacle, which is how do we show ROI and value? How do we translate that usage data to ROI and value? And all of this you just mentioned, like, do you have like a, a recent success story from a company you worked with that you're allowed to talk about or share how you were able to transform, you know, the way they acquired customers and then using Matic and it kind of took off and and how that happened, what kind of data was found, um, you know, what what the statistics were, and the metrics or whatnot that you handed over towards the end. Yeah, totally. So one of our customers that we work with is Handshake. Um, oh yeah. Uh, and uh, so they're kind of like a, like a LinkedIn, but more for for college students. Colleges, yeah, we're on there. Yeah. So we, we, we've been recently getting a lot of college grads and college students for our startup to totally. um, work with us uh, on internships. Pretty clunky platform, I have to admit, but um, but we have been successful in getting students to work with our startup, so it's a cool platform. Yeah, um, so they they use their customer success and sales teams use Matic to automate uh, data driven content that they share with their uh, employers, right? And so um, everything from like I said, doing business reviews to industry trends, uh, they're going and automating that. So we were able to kind of take a look when they first started with us, what it was prior to Matic and post Matic. And we calculated that we'd saved their team over 4,500 hours 
putting together that. Whoa. Kind of, right? And so that's a lot of hours, uh, man. They, you know, they, work with a lot of, yeah, they work with a lot of employers. And so um, when you've got a massive team like they do, um, you know, if you've got a hundred accounts and you're a CSM and you're having to go and put together those business reviews those renewal decks, all that stuff. And now we're automating it. Um, it definitely gives them a lot of time back to do more strategic work, right. Than the tedious plugging and pulling data into a presentation. Wow. That's incredible. Uh, I've noticed how automated the platform is. So are you saying that that is part of, of using Matic is that it becomes more automated or is things just move faster for like a consumer standpoint, or does it not matter to us? It's more for the organizations using it. It's more for the organizations that are, that are using it. Right. So, okay. um, you know, they, they set up these templates within Matic, as I mentioned before, they'll right. connect the variety of data sources and set up those templates. And then, uh, you know, the end users or the customer success managers, account executives, the people that are generating the presentations, they'll come into Matic, select a template, give us some inputs, and then we go and pull all the data on their behalf and spit out a presentation. So that's really where the, the time savings is realized is when I've got a QBR tomorrow with a certain customer, I select the QBR template, and I'll spit out a uh, fully editable presentation with all the data for that account that you're presenting to, right? Right, and we're supposed to talk about how to build trust with customers, right? So how do you build trust with customers by leveraging data? Is there a specific uh, yeah. method that's behind Matic that does this? Well, I think data, I think this isn't any net new insight. I think you, a lot of people already know this, but data is the new currency, right? Um, and so at the end of that's how we make decisions. That's how we drive decision-making at a, at a company level. And uh, now more than ever, you should be using data to be able to showcase value and ROI to your customers, right? Uh, and even if the data is not great, right? Like you, I think a lot of people think that uh, I'm too worried, you know, maybe adoption hasn't been great or maybe weekly active users hasn't been great. I'm too scared to show that. Well, early on, if you show that really early on, that's great. You're being honest with the customer right. and then you can go and help them get those numbers up. You can say, hey, we acknowledge that this isn't great, but here are the things that we can do to fix this and have you guys increase adoption using our product. And so I would argue that no matter what stage in the customer lifecycle, being able to use that data will help build credibility and trust uh, with your prospect and customers to then ultimately lead to going back to the pinnacle, which is value and ROI. That's a good point too, because a lot of times when you look at data, it's not always pretty, right? You start yeah. to, you might find the kinks that you need to work out. And so the data helps you get past those challenges. So let's let's just discuss quickly the, the challenges and pitfalls that might come with data. And, and and how you overcome those. Totally. Um, so I think one, I, I guess the, the first thing that I would say is know your audience, right? So uh, data is, is great, but at the same time, knowing who your audience is and what they care about is probably going to, is probably going to inform the data that you showcase within your narrative, right? So that's probably one thing to keep in mind. Always keep your audience or the person that you're presenting to in mind. Second is data is never perfect. So, uh, you know, uh, whether it's CRM, whether it's a database, whether it's Tableau, so definitely be proactive in making sure that you are focusing on data accuracy, right? And that you're focusing on data reliability. Uh, and so that that is definitely something that we advocate to our customers and we advocate in the market is, it's one thing putting together a story, but again, you wanna make sure that people have faith in the data and that they trust it. So definitely having checks and balances in place that will ensure, you know, things aren't wrong uh, when they are pulling that data. And what's uh, like maybe one mistake that uh, people do when it comes to data that they could be doing much better or if Matic, Matic might solve that issue that keeps popping up over and over again? Yeah, I would say you want, you don't want to, you don't want to work in silos, right? So going back to just data driven narratives in general, um, I may come up with something that I think is fantastic. I may come up with a visualization that I think is so cool, right? But I'm a data nerd. <laughs> so <laughs> what I think is awesome and amazing might not be something that the masses will comprehend or understand. Right. So going back to 
always incorporating feedback along every single stage like that is huge so come up with an outline get feedback make some changes get feedback again um so that that that's something that we definitely try to push a lot of our customers and we push the market on is how do you constantly get that feedback um to make sure that your that your assets and your templates are are bulletproof that's the old entrepreneurship adage, uh, data, feedback, iterate, data, feedback, exactly. iterate, and just in a loop over and over again. But people exactly. always don't want to do that. They think they know better than the data. We got to teach them a lesson, right? And they can do <laughs> that at uh, matic.io, correct? Correct. Yeah. So go to our website, matic.io, and, and uh, we've got some great content on there to, to showcase uh, what we focus on, the value that we drive uh, to our customers. Sweet, Nick. Thanks for coming. Hope you guys uh, learned a little bit about some data and some from some data nerds here. And uh, check out matic.io and we'll see you guys in the next episode. Mm -hmm.